Okay, hello everyone. It's uh, it's a Wednesday. If you're on live, it's a Wednesday anyway. Time for our Warriors Whiteboard Wednesday. I'm Daishian Miller from Warrior Concepts. And so let's just jump right into things. Oh, I've got my markers. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, this week's topic is on striking, uh, you know, how to punch, all those wonderful, well, wonderful things, right? But everybody knows how to punch, right? You just ball up your fist and, and you go to town, right? Well, if that's true, then why are so many people breaking their hands? Um, and if everybody knows how to punch, then how do we give ourselves an advantage over everybody else who knows how to punch, right? How do we do that, right? So if we dive into ninjutsu, specifically uh, one of our nine schools, our Togakure school, uh, there are these, uh, there's a category of things, right? And all ninja lists are open, right? Uh, it looks like it's, there's a finite number, but it's really kind of open-ended, right? Uh, the ninja jiropuken, right? The uh, 16 fist of a ninja, right? So, and while that list includes things like headbutt and shoulders and elbows and knees and toes and all that kind of stuff, right? What I want to do today is focus on what most people think of when it comes to punching, right? Uh, the nine of those 16 are how we, uh, how we use the, uh, the hands, right? And before I forget, for those of you who like to follow along each week and jump onto our extra training on Friday, Almost missed something here. Sorry, I know it looks like an earthquake or whatever, but it's the stand that I'm using. I apologize. So let's see. Let's make sure that's the right one. Okay, excellent. All right. So, um, so what I thought we'd do very uh, first is take a look at these nine fists out of these sixteen. Right? Again, sixteen. Right? These nine fists made with the hand out of the Togakure school, and take a look at them for what they are. Right? They're specific designs and tools. Right? for specific jobs. Just like, you know, if I were a carpenter, I might have three, four different types of hammers. Now I'm not a carpenter, so I don't know if they have more than that, right? Uh, if I were, uh, you know, if I'm laying carpet and I'm, I'm using, I'm putting down tacks, right? That's a different type of hammer than if I'm splitting wood or wrecking something and I need a sledge, right? Or you get the idea, right? Same thing, right? Uh, auto mechanics, whatever, right? While they may have, there, there's a category of tool, right? Screwdriver, hammer, pliers, whatever. How many different forms of that for very specific jobs? And that's how we should be taking a look at our fist, okay? So very quickly, like I said, there's like nine of these things. Uh, and the category that these things generally fall under, right, is known as atemi, okay, atemi, right? Mi right here is the same kanji in taijutsu and ukemi and whatnot, right? So mi here is body, right? Ate means impacting, right? To impact, right? To strike the body, right? So different ways to do that, right? And I know a lot of you guys that follow along with me, you know kopo jutsu, you know daken taijutsu, you know all these different things, right? That have to do with striking, right? Furi hitting, uch strike, general terms, right? But how do we impact the body, right? How do we how do we connect with it and engage with it so that we can do what we're supposed to do? And what that thing is is to what? I mean, we could talk about striking some other uh, some other class where we're talking about uh, everything from distracting all the way to disabling it so it can't function at least in the direction that the person intends for it to go, right? So anyway, right? So uh, nine of these strikes, right? So we have. Uh, I'm just going to write them out very, very quickly. Fudoken, Shikanken, right? uh, Kitenken, what most of you generally know as Shto. Okay, I know, sloppy handwriting, right? Kitenken, so, uh, Shitanken, I normally call it like a finger spear kind of thing, right? Shitanken. Uh, one, two, three, four, da, 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 da. Boshiken, also known as Shitoken, Shitoken, right? Uh, Hapaken, Shishinken, oops, Shishinken, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Shako Ken. Shako Ken. All right, what a mess. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I do this every time. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, Kopoken. Sorry. Kopoken. Okay, Kopoken. All right. So, Fudoken, immovable fist, right? For broad areas of the body, blunt force trauma kind of thing. Think sledgehammer, right? Shikanken, four rings fist. We often in our school call it a chisel fist just because it helps people expediently, right? Because it's like a chisel, right? So instead of hitting with a sledgehammer, sometimes you need to get a chisel in there or get an axe, right? Same weight as a sledgehammer, but we're concentrating uh, power on a very specific point, right? Please notice I, I push my fingers forward to make this thing. I don't just curl them, right? That's going to make for broken fingers, broken hand bones, and all that kind of stuff, right? Shito, shiten, shitan ken. This is also our primary climbing fist, right? Shito, uh, kiten ken, right? This way. Um, omote, ura, you know, that kind of thing, right? Shitan ken, any three or four fingers reinforced, right? To stick it into places, right? It goes into the eye really well, okay? That kind of thing, right? But the end of your shito is a shitan ken. You don't even have to change change shape, right? Uh, Boshi ken or shito ken, right? This thumb drive fist, right? Please make sure that you're not just pressing down with the thumb tip. That's going to make for a, for a stoved finger or broken hand or whatever, right? It's this knuckle pressing down. Okay? This is going to be important when you get to tugakure, actual tugakure stuff or koto stuff, and you're wearing the shuko, the hand claws. You can't do crap like this, right? With that band on your hand, right? So you need to understand how to seat that so that when you strike with it, right? You, it's not going to fold. Okay, that kind of thing, right? Bush can, hop a can, right? Eight leaves fist, just an open hand. Slap, I know anybody that ever says uh, slapping's for girls, right? It's never been slapped by a ninja because our slaps are designed to break bones. And if yours can't, I don't know, keep practicing. Chishin can, right? Any single finger or knuckle, right? As a, as a target, I know. There's lots of schools and each one might give these a slightly different name, but you get the idea, right? Chishin can, shako can, right? This palm strike claw hand kind of combination in the cold audio it's a little bit different right comes in all fingertips right but a uh, little modifications and then couple can right Kopo means bone method right what it's really pointing to is just this this corner right here so if i'm using a uh uh, uh can except for my beginners right where i want to make sure they have that thumb tucked away later on we can put this thing here so that now i've got all sides that I can use without having to change or modify the hand. And my thumb is in a position that I can open into all these other places, right? And that's the idea, right? One to another to another. But each of these things, for quick reference, right? I'm, I'm flying through this lesson. For a quick reference, you can go to, first book Katsumi Sitsei put out in English, uh, Need to Sue History and Tradition, right? Go through the fist, and it gives a really brief kind of description of body target types, right? So solid, broad areas, areas that are semi-soft, so it might be bone with some little bit of flesh over it, uh, soft targets, uh, stomach, and, 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 you know, things like that, right? Uh, or very soft targets, right? Squishy things, right? Like stomated, eyeball, those kind of things, right? The whole idea here is it gives you flexibility. So, uh, for instance, right, uh, if, I were, if I were punching, right, the average person, if, if they're just using – fist, right? And they're hitting and they land a blow like right in this region right here. It's not that it won't hurt, right? But they're, they're hitting broad this way, right? But this shoulder assembly is cup-like, right? It's cup-like, right? This way, right? And so if I hit this way, I'm disseminating the, the, the power, just like a sledgehammer hitting, a, hitting a, a, a piece of wood that I'm trying to split, right? It's this blunt force trauma kind of thing. And it's, it's going to cause some irritation and discomfort and all that wonderful stuff, right? But if at the last second I pop that baby open into a shikan ken and I take the power of this mass and suddenly put it across a smaller space, I now slide into that shoulder socket and go after the brachial nerve. Uh, what else is in there? The um, vagus nerve, the phrenic nerve, all that kind of stuff that, you know, keeps stuff operating, right? Okay. So same thing, right? If I can very quickly change into these things and use them, then I can hit certain points that it's harder for him to, to cover, right? If I start coming in, you know, for the face or whatever, and he drops that jaw, right, brings those hands up, right? I can take that thing and roll it over and come up underneath, right, to catch things, okay? Same idea, all right? So 
what we need to be taking a look at your tools or is your, your strikes, your tools, right? From the perspective of they fit certain things. And I may have done a training on this in the past or whatever, but um, I, I really want to, I'm using this as a, as a springboard to what I really want to cover today. Okay. So we have these different tools, right? And again, think toolbox, okay? Think whatever, right? You may have a set of tools and whatnot. How many different types of pliers do you have, right? I can think of needle nose. I can think of, uh, I have a, a certain type of pliers that both uh, strips uh, the insulation off wires and cuts it and things like that. Uh, standard pliers. I have uh, uh, angled pliers, all kinds of things, right? So what, see these as, as that kind of thing, right? But also from the ninja's perspective, all weapons, all weapons, doesn't matter if they're things that you'd pick up and use or the things that grow off of us, right? All are utilitarian kind of things. That means that all strikes, all fists are also grappling or leveraging kind of things, right? So a shitan ken, right? This kind of thing, right? Is also your thumb. Uh, I was taught it as a thumb pressure grip, right? So when I go after this pressure point right here, I don't have my hand wrapped around where I'm trying to independently use my thumb this way, right? It goes around and then my fingertips curl in and my thumb goes down and into the target because I'm trying to do this in the middle of his arm. The leverage is completely different, okay? Same thing uh, with your Fudokan, right? You can strike with it, but you can also lever and hook with it, right? Uh, I already covered your Kitenken or your Sto, right? You've got, you know, this kind of thing, but it can also be used as a modified hapaken, right? So instead of just slapping this way, cupping it and creating this percussion kind of thing, it's used in massage, right? Just different things, right? Um, so they're not just for striking, right? It's like orange juice, not just for breakfast anymore, for those of you old enough to remember that commercial. Anyway, right? So atemi, striking the body, impacting the body is a whole science. And this is just scratching the surface. And yet this is one of those things that most people take for granted, right? Because, you know, since say a strike's a strike. Well, okay, right? So I'm not going to argue with anybody because they're going to do them and I'm going to do me and my students are going to do this, well, at least when they're in a classroom, right? Um, or come to a seminar because when they go back home, I don't know, they're still going to do them, right? So but this is, this is all fine, but let's take any one of those strikes. I don't care. You pick any one off that list. I don't care what it is. Okay. So first thing my students get is this idea of nine directional striking, nine directional striking. Okay. So, and again, we can change fist, you can do whatever. Right. But generally speaking, Make a weird face here, right? A weird, weird body, right? <sighs> right? Just get this person, right? I know, weird, right? Anyway, right? So nine directional striking, doesn't matter if it's with a hanbo, with a leg, with a hand, arm, fist, whatever, right? We have the cardinal directions. We have the diagonal directions. That means that. Eight, yes? And then we have ski straight in, okay? I know, got this weird glare on the thing. Can you see that? Awesome. Okay, cool, All right? So nine-directional striking, there's a whole other way of looking at striking, right? But what I want to do today is I want to take a look at, at uh, 12 dynamics, right? Four categories or four, four variables, right? for every single strike that we could throw. It's the biggest complaint I get from a lot of my long distance students is, since I don't have to work with, I, I can't practice. Really? You know, he needs a training target for this. You don't need a person. But anyway, sorry, I'll stop that, right? Because it sounds annoying, doesn't it? Yeah, I know, it's annoying when other people do it in my direction too. Anyway, all right, so dynamics, right? So how many ways can we throw any given fist? Fist. I don't care if it's Shako Ken, Fudo Ken, Shikan Ken. I don't care, right? How many different ways can we throw it? I'm not talking about the directions, right? I'm not talking about changing it to some other fist, right? Anything like that, right? I'm talking about from right here, right here, okay? And I launch this thing. How many different ways? How many different? How many different ways is there to throw a Fudo Ken or a Shishin Ken or whatever, okay? So let's take a look at them. There are four 
variables, okay? Four variables, right? So there is, and I'm just kind of throwing these things out, right? There's level, there's range, there's angle, okay? And there's what I'm gonna call delivery method. Delivery method, okay? Again, put up with my crappy writing. And if you're a non-English speaker, I really apologize for you, okay? See, you see it? I'm gonna shift this a little bit because for whatever reason today, there we go, okay, cool. All right, so level, right? Should be obvious, right? We've got high, what? Mid and low, right? Range, close, mid, long. There is, there are two other ranges, very close range and very long range. There's also out of range, okay? So I change things here because my writing is atrocious even for me. What did I just have there? Angle. For those of you non-spellers, non-readers, that's angle, not angel. Change one letter position, everything changes, right? English sucks. Anyway, angle, okay? So we have piercing. We have hooking. And we have uh, what I'm going to call swatting. Okay? You'll see what I mean here in a minute because there are no really good words, single words for these things, and I like to keep it as short as possible, right? Delivery methods. We have leads. We have crosses. And we have lunges. Most people in the Bujin Khan don't know anything outside of a freaking lunge because, well, that's the traditional way to do things. Really? That's it? That's all you got? Okay? Nobody learned to go into the freaking scrolls and see that if I get my shit together and I have my distancing and my situational control right, he's forced to throw a long range ski. I'm not in range for a jab, so he can't use one. Okay? If I don't know what I'm doing, then we're just throwing ski because, well, that's what Sensei said. That's not what Sensei said, okay? You got to look at more than just the demonstration that you think is going on, all right? So anyway, level, right? High, middle, and low, right? Okay, so high is anything from shoulders up, okay? Shoulders up across above the hachi, right? The hachi is the apex of your chest, okay? Not just for girls, right? Okay, so comes down at an angle this way and then cuts back down. I know some of us have like a little Buddha thing going on or whatever, but there's this apex right here, okay? At or just above the nipple line, right? Uh, hachi means shelf, right? So this is used as an extra hand, all that kind of stuff. But just as a guiding point from here up, high level, right? Going in for something like that, right? Mid from that point to right about the hara, okay? Right about where the, uh, the belly button is, right? So hara, godin, whatever you want to call that, right? So mid-range and then low, it's anything below that, right? Okay. But we're not, we're not bending over to go after it. That's what your knees are for. Sink to go low into this thing, right? Okay. Range, close, mid, and long. Okay. He's right on top of me, right? So that's where elbows and things like that are going to fit. Very close is where head butts, shoulders, hips, those kind of things fit in, right? Mid-range, right? I don't have to move very much. He's right there. And then long range, I'm going to have to step to get him. Okay. Uh, angle, right? Piercing straight in. Okay. Ski, pierce, pierce, thrust. Most people, they call the strike ski, right? Well, that, that's our strike. No, no. Ski means to pierce or thrust. It's not just pointing out a straight line attack. It's a spearman and swordsman term. And your intention should be to go through his body. It's a whole different dynamic. Right. There's a there's a, there, I will have to split this down at some other point. Right. Every strike has two parts to it. Right. There's a there's a there's an impacting kind of thing. Right. And there's a follow through or a driving kind of thing. Right. So we can either do both at the same time where there's a certain time that the fist does what it does so that it can break things. And then that follow through doesn't just shove them off balance. It displaces bones. Right. Very different from a from a snapping strike. Right. Or we can concentrate on just the impact part or just the follow through part, right? Okay, so very, very different, right? Piercing. Hooking, what I mean by hooking is not, yeah, there are, there are guys that do this kind of thing. What I'm talking about are, are strikes that come from the outside 
in, right? So I can still be moving my arm the same way, but if I move a certain way, my hand moves appropriately to that kind of thing. So it's moving from the outside in, right? Sto, right? Okay. It's a hook. I know it's just happening right here. Well, the biggest problem that most people have with their shoot though is they throw it from way back here, right? If they make contact at the wrong place, oh, they're just going to tear this stuff up, which is going to make me smile because um, I hope they're working with me at that time. Anyway, so hooking is outside to in. Swatting, I don't mean baby slap kind of things. I mean like inside to out, right? Our swatting counter strike and gilko to you, circular counter strikes do the same thing. Uh, Urashto, right? Inside to out, right? And then we have lead cross and lunge, right? So lead is lead leg, lead hand, either the, just the knee and the hand, right? Or I shuffle as I deliver this, right? But it's lead, lead, right? So the lead side of the body stays lead as we go. Cross, I'm not talking about a boxer's cross. Problem with a boxer's cross, great thing about a boxer's cross is there's all that wind up and when they hit you, you're done. Bad thing about a boxer's cross is that when you miss, you're open. Okay? So what, what I want to take a look at is lead side of my body closes, right, stays, and the rear side does the strike. Okay? It's still the same. Okay? And then lunge, we all know lunge. Rear side moves into lead side position, right? Okay. So what we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is a math question, okay? If every strike, unless we've crippled ourselves by only doing things one way or five ways or official style ways or whatever, if every strike has a variable from each category, how many strike combinations do we have, right? So... If we have a high, close range, piercing cross strike, you get the idea? One from each one. Every strike has something from each one. How many combinations? Eighty-one different ways to throw every fist you have. I don't ever want to hear anybody say, I don't know what to work on. I don't have any way to practice with. This is ninjutsu. You can't do, you can't practice alone. Really? Really? Interesting. It's bullshit, but interesting, right? So um, it's either laziness, ignorance, and I don't mean like stupidity. I mean, they don't know any better, right? Or you got your stuff from somebody else that was either ignorant or stupid, or you, you get the idea, right? Okay. So the idea is understanding, right? Not just weapon types and what parts of the body they work well against, right? But delivery, right? Angle, all those kind of things, right? Because what this does, as always, is gives us more options, more flexibility and adaptability, right? This, this doesn't just expand our skill set, right? It also allows us to confuse and, and dominate an attacker, because we're not stuck with jackhammer kind of stuff, right? We can, we can move in different directions, right, to catch things so that as these different things happen, right, they go together, right? But even if we expand out from that, you know, what I said, the nine were the hand, right? We move into elbows, right? Shuki Ken, right? Okay. Remember the nine directional striking that way? You have at least that, right? Those kind of things, right? Dropping, lifting, all that kind of stuff, right? But do you still have high, mid, low, close? Of course. Of course. Same thing with knees. Same thing, right? So you might not always be able to strike with the same body or the same part, right? Okay. So if I'm going, if I'm using my right hand, it might be a hooking strike, right? Going in one direction, but it's going to be a swatting strike going in another direction. Eventually, you know, all this stuff is just going to become a part of the skill set, right? So uh, I don't know if anybody saw that one class that we did where um, I forced all students to do nothing but shoot those strikes every time they engage their, their partner, right? Well, who's going to do that in a fight, Sensei? I don't know. I don't care. 
What I care about is can you recognize good targets for a particular fist on the fly so that you know under pressure in a fight which fist to make without having to think about target, fist, recipe file, okay? That you can just do it, right? Okay. Ultimately, you're going to throw whatever you're going to throw because it's going to be open. But you have to get yourself wired so that you can, one, recognize which fist is going to fit that target that's open right now. Two, you need to be able to make the fist flawlessly so it won't break or fold when you strike with it, right? And three, you need to be able to hit when you need to hit, and that strike has to have bite, okay? Not just, okay? I, I, beginner students, I love them to death, right? And I'm sure I did the same thing. And I'm, I'm always constantly surprised that my teachers didn't kill me. But anyway, right? Um, the, the instruction will be during a test, uh, you know, he's going to throw a certain type of an attack, you're going to shift in some kind of come eye, and then do a counter, right from right there as quickly as you can hit something, kick something, whatever, right. And people will get out of the way and they'll do like a strike a broad muscle or something like that and the fist doesn't fit in the early stages i only care that they're like reactionary and they're they're not like hanging out and getting stuck in paralysis through analysis but eventually you can't be wasting a whole lot of shots on on this guy that don't do anything it's kind of like when we go to the gun range right and i've, I've got guys out there every once in a while i get somebody who's just a crappy shot right they haven't taken the time with the fundamentals, right? But if you think they're all that a bag of fucking microwave popcorn because they carry, right? Except that they can't hit the broadside of a damn barn, let alone in who knows what. Anyway, right? So what they'll do when they get frustrated is they'll do what we call pray and spray or spray and pray, right? They'll just send as many rounds downrange as possible and empty their weapon. Well, now what? That was only one, one, one target, one opponent, right? Now what the hell, right? Okay. It's just like with the fist or your kicks or any technique that you have. I'm going to use the same phrase I use for those guys out on the range. You can't miss often enough to win. You can't miss often enough to win. Right? So we need to get to a point where everything matters. Everything counts. We have options. We have tools that work. They don't break when we use them. Right? We, can, we, can, we know what we need under pressure. Right. And we can make it. We, we don't have to think about it. Right. He stunk can I go to stunk can I? He stole and you go to stole. Shako can, both can, can. You get the idea. Right. Couple can. We just go. Right. But what this allows us to do with this kind of framework, and you're not going to be memorizing this thing for the fight. What this framework does is allow you to create kind of a little chart or something like that and go, okay. All right. So I'm really good with high level, long range piercing lunges. Okay, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure I got that right. I'm pretty good with uh, long range, high uh, hooking, hooking. No, swatting uh, leads. Right, been doing those things for a long time. Okay, what don't I? What haven't I even thought about for my training? Right, and don't tell me that this stuff's not in our training. Don't tell me that this stuff is not in any of the techniques in any of our scrolls. Just because they're not called these things and just because they're not pointed out doesn't mean that we don't have every single one of these things. People tell me well, we don't have like we don't do lead punches. We don't do cross punches. Huh? Really? OK. Whatever. Right. I'm not here to convince anybody of anything. I'm here to help people who want to learn something. All right. But anyway. You have 81 different ways to throw a fudo can. Every 81 different ways to throw a shikan can, uh, shto, uh, shikan can. But eventually, they all become the same, right? Because it's the same high, middle, low, lead, cross, lot. You get the idea, right? But that's going to start to point out, right? How? What if I'm doing a uh, like a swatting, right? This inside to outside. Um, let's say it's a mid to long range high, whatever, right? But I'm using a shishin kit, right? Well, that's outside the body. That's that way. I'm going to have to figure out 
how to turn that thing because his eyeballs are right there. Guy jumps off a motorcycle. And he's wearing a freaking helmet. That he pops that Lexan mask up. You're not going to be pounding him all about his head and neck. So you better be able to fit Shitan Ken, the end of a Shito, which is still a Shitan Ken, Shishin Ken or whatever, in through that visor. Or you're not doing a hell of a, whole, a lot of anything, especially if he's wearing biker leathers. Right? There's a whole other contextual world that if we could get our head outside the damn dojo and outside of the sterile laboratory, that's not going to do anything out there. And we start to think about what kind of situations could we be in? And look at those other variables. You know, we can talk about those some other day, right? But variables, right? What kind of clothing is the bad guy wearing? What kind of surface are we on? Whatever, right? What's the context? What kind of environment are we in? Same thing. What kind of clothing am I wearing? Da, 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 blah, 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 right? Again, we're dropping numbers on here because either I'm talking too much or people think they know what the hell they're doing. Or, and if they do know what they're doing and they're already really, really good at this stuff, I don't know why the hell they'd be looking at my videos unless... They're trying to find fault because they've self self assumed some kind of, uh, you know, who knows, right? They, they need to pick apart everybody else's stuff. You show me your videos. I'm showing you mine. Then we'll have a conversation, right? Because I don't have conversations with six-year-olds and adolescents about grown-up things, right? So anyway, this is what we have, all right? That's the lesson for today. I know it's kind of short on this, on, on this point, but if you want more, uh, we're almost done with the with the uh, the page for registering for this Friday's uh, virtual training. Right, right there's the the URL. Check back. I don't know about an hour or so, um, and then you'll be able to log in and, and get on there. We've got some regulars. Uh, uh, one of my guys from the West Coast and people from all over the place. Right, there's only 15 spots available. Right, because I, I need to be able to handle people in class, and I need to be able to run back and forth uh, to the computer and answer questions or watch what people are doing. You get questions answered. You get me to review your, your, uh, your Taijutsu, that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, if you don't believe virtual works, then okay, it doesn't work. But my question to people who say virtual doesn't work is why the hell do you keep searching, uh, YouTube to learn things? That's just ironic anyway. Um, so, but uh, you can jump on. Classes are four dollars and ninety nine cents. You get a seventy five to ninety minute class, right? Almost an hour and a half, right? Um, on a given topic. This week, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at combining these things and looking at a couple of actual traditional models that actually do prove that we do crosses and leads and all that kind of cool stuff that people say we don't, right? So anyway, it'll be fun. With you or without you, I always hope that it's with, right? If you're catching this late. Uh, and it's still within the week, we're still not at Friday, June 3rd, 2022, then you can hop on that, go over. If you hop on that and go over now, you're probably going to go on to either something that says that registration's closed or you're way past it and a whole different topic is up, right? So, uh, but anyway, you can jump on that or not. And uh, if you do, it'd be great to have you. If not, no harm, no foul. Uh, let's see, uh, next big... Uh, seminar we have coming up is at the end of September of 2022. It's our annual fall uh, ninja training camp. And what we're going to be doing during that one is taking a look at the ninja no Hachimo, this litmus test used in ancient Japan to determine who, who as a teacher or who as a school or what is a school was authorized to say that they were teaching ninjutsu, right? These eight key pieces had to be a part of the training, right? These eight pieces are a part of the Tugakure school that has 18 levels. 36 levels, but had to be in there, right? So we're going to take a look at that, recognize that that's based on the, the technology of the day, but maintaining principle and concept, translating that into 21st century America, Canada, India, wherever you guys happen to be, right? Um, to, to actually look at recreating the eight gates with modern technology that's doing exactly the same thing that the traditional stuff was doing. Because ninja are always on the cutting edge of things, not strapped to tradition for tradition's sake, right? That's samurai mindset, okay? Unless they were like a gyoko gyokushin school, front door, back door, the same lineage, right? This looks like we're complying. Meanwhile, back here, yeah. We don't buy into the, all this bullshit. All right. So anyway, I got to wrap this up. 
And uh, if you have any questions, comments, obviously, right, post down below, share this stuff around. What I've been told is that uh, YouTube's uh, algorithm within the first 42 to 48 hours, 45 to 48 hours, something like that, right? Then the amount of engagement tells uh, YouTube whether this is something that's uh, f worth them throwing out to other folks and helping them out. So in the, in the meantime, like, subscribe if you're on YouTube, uh, share if you're on either Facebook, YouTube, whatever, and uh, help other people get the stuff, right? Uh, let them decide whether or not it's valuable to them. I'm okay either way, right? I'm only looking for students that are looking for serious training, okay? Otherwise, right, if you haven't been to YouTube, get over there, right, uh, and, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, that way you'll know whenever new things come in. Uh, online Ninja Training, uh, YouTube, or, uh, Facebook page, Kuden Podcast every Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, all that kind of stuff. We've got plenty for you to do, right? Make sure you get on our mailing list. That way you know when training opportunities are coming up, uh, when I'm releasing new books, new training, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you're more than welcome to, ha to, to jump in, all right? Until next week, hopefully before, but until next week, train hard, be safe. Talk to you soon.